two losses today, but if he gets a win here, he'll be playing elimination rounds. And this is going to be the difference. You know, the creatures in Luis's deck here are very polarized in terms of quality. The small stuff, not very good. His poor toughness stuff, very powerful and puts a lot of pressure on four copies of Stoker Flames. We are underway here in game number one. I do have some updates for you guys on exactly what did happen. Andrew Boswell got paired against Chad Castell. They drew. Osil Vidovich, Ralph Patesh, they got paired. They drew. Brad Nelson, Corey Baumeister, their brothers, they got paired up. One of them conceded to the other. Not sure if Brad conceded to Corey or Corey conceded to Brad. So when we do have a result. We'll let you know. Two reasons for that. One is a draw does not help either player. Of course. And two, having to play the green-white devotion mirror <laughs> match may be worse than knocking a sibling out of a Grand Prix it's, top eight. It's true. It's true. So when we do have a result for you guys on that match, if Corey scooped to Brad or Brad scooped to Corey, which, you know, brothers really couldn't draw it up any better than that, I imagine. We will let you guys know there. But they would rather not play the green-white devotion mirror with it all on the line, it seems. I'm going to blame him. Cassianos on turn two. He does have all three colors of mana. He has a Frostwalker, so he's going to get things started right away. Now, we mentioned how Frostwalker obviously does interact very well against one toughness creatures. Mono Red has quite a few of those, or one power creatures, excuse me. But there's not really that many ways in Ryan's deck to, to blow the card out. You see a trade with a Wild Slash, which is fine. A lot of two drops would just do that. The only card that is punishing that kills the Frostwalker for free, two copies of Goblin Heal Cutter in the main. Here's a Swift Spear. Kaczynski will come across for one point of damage here. Kaczynski is going to go down to 18. So I've been critical of the teamer bu builds of the deck that are trying to play with Karyat and Corsair. Uh, this is one matchup where I think the teamer, that build of teamer is the superior one. Luis taking a lot of damage off of his own lands, playing with a lot of fragile creatures so that's susceptible to removal spells. Well, here's a Crater's Clause. Ooh, this is some risky business. It's a touch risky. It looks like it may get the job done. I mean, if there's a Wild Slash hanging out here, This is some very risky business. Well, it's going to work out. He'll pass the turn back. That could have easily been, your thing's dead and my guy's alive. Yeah. Well, here's a Goblin Rabble Master. That'll make a Goblin Token if it's into game. I imagine it will be coming through. So there is the attack for one. We'll see if Castellanos can keep up here. Taking a look at Grzynski's deck list for you Mono Red fans out there. Four Swiss Spears, four Foundry Denizens, four Fire Drinker Satyrs, three Mardu Scouts, two Goblin Heal Cutters, two Goblin Rabble Masters, and then a lot of burn spells. Four Stoke the Flames, four Wild Slash, four Lightning Strike, four Searing Blood, and then four copies of Horley Outburst, 21 Mountains. And if you're a Mono Red fan, you've got to be excited by some of the spoilers that have been coming down the pipeline this weekend, Dragons and Tarkir. Yeah. Just a lot of juice for Mono Red Aggro. Crater's Claws, Ferocious Style will take care of that Goblin Rabble Master. Castellanos will follow up with a Savage Knuckle Blade. Frostwalker is going to come into the red zone. This is a really, really nice start for Luis. He is dealing himself some points of damage, but outside of that, he's got to be happy with where he's at. His creatures are huge. Yes, yeah, the four toughest stuff that he's really, that he's really looking for here. And we do get the update here for you guys in which Brad Nelson conceded to his brother. So assuming that things do go correctly, Corey Baumeister will be in the top eight, and that means he'll be qualified for a pro tour. Pretty nice gesture from the brother. Brad gets him to come out and then concedes him in the last round of the Swiss for the top eight. I'm sure, not sure there's a Perfect. better story. Yeah. Because, you know, Brad doesn't really need another standard top eight. Right. He's already established dominance. He's proved all, all that he has to prove, yeah. you know? Look, Brad, we get it. You're the best standard player in the world. We get it. It would actually be bad form if he top eight again. <laughs> you know, it's, it's bordering on rude at that point. It really is. Let someone else get a little bit of shine. Savage Knuckle Blade taken care of by Stoke the Flames. Goblin Token will come into the red zone. That'll be Grzynski's turn. But this is kind of showing what Frostwalker can do. It would die to any removal spell anyway. Right. Here's Goblin Rabble Master. Goblin Token will be joining it, of course. Into the red zone for five. And if you don't kill it, it takes huge chunks out of your life total. Krasinski with a Searing Blood in hand. And it looks like he's going to cast that. He'll go after Goblin Rabble Master. 
So Castellanos will have to take three now. You can see some degree of hesitation because Subber Denial is in play. And he's going to keep right on attacking. The follow-up is Mardu Scout. Pass the turn back. A little interested to see the Mardu Scout cast and not dash in the face of a 1-1 token. To me, implies that Ryan has some way to kill the token next turn. Or his hand is so jammed with action that he's not going to be able to dash the scout this turn and dash next turn. Well, here's four mana. Gassiano's going to take a point of damage here. Let's see what he's casting. It's a Shaman of the Great Hunt. Let's see how aggressive he wants to get. Looks like he's just content with Frostwalker. Well, the token does us so much more work on defense than on offense. At this point, with the Martyr's Scout out there, I have to agree. We're just going to take a look at Shaman of the Great Hunt. decision here for Grzynski because we're I mean we're in a damage racing game that's for sure yeah. and Luis's last card is storm breath dragon and if you're in a seat right now you are hoping for a block because you got to feel like the game goes on later he's got an edge if Ryan says no blocks he probably has some follow-up here for the shaman Grzynski will draw Looks like Luis may have missed the counter there. For the Frostwalker, did come through after all. Does appear to be the case. Yeah. Now it is on him, of course, remember, it's his card after all, so here's a heel cutter. Ugh. This is the one card in the deck that really punishes Frostwalker. Yep. And there's your dash. And there's your target. Bye bye, Frostwalker. And a great attack here because it's either a chump with the token or a trade with the shaman or three points of damage. Ryan's happy with all outcomes. This is, this is your kind of card. Oh, yeah. I, you would be playing this card in some numbers. A creature that says target creature can't block on it is my jam. Frenzy Goblin, Fire Fist Striker. You ever do any goblin shortcutting? A little bit. <laughs> Not a lot, a little bit. I mean, I drafted a lot of Zendikar, so I think I have, like, 70 of them on my account. Oh, great card in that format. A format where Bedlam's in play? That's my kind of format. Oh, yeah. There's your trade. So heel cutter did. That's a great heel cutter turn. Yeah. Now there's a Swiss Spear. Pass the turn back. Couldn't play that pre-combat at any effect because the 4-2 would have been up to block. Yep. You see the differences between these two decks? Model Red Aggro... Pretty honest, 21 mountains, not the highest power level deck. Efficient, though. On the other side, Castellanos has very powerful cards like Savage Knuckle Blade, Goblin Rabble Master, Shaman of the Great Hunt, Craters Claws, but he's got a painful mana base. The, the lands are the real big problem here, and where you may want to see, you know, I don't like the coarser builds, but they might be better here. Seven to seven now. Kuzinski with two cards in hand. Looks like he's got a spell to play. He'll play a mountain. Well, he can go dashing again, but it leaves him dead on the way back to a number of cards. And in fact, the knuckle blade just does it. I guess if the heel cutter gets involved here and targets the knuckle blade, then Luis has to block something with his token. Yep. Meaning it's not dead on board because the knuckle blade can only deal six. Correct. But there's a lot of things that can go wrong. There's a lot to be scared of. And it's going to be a pretty conservative turn. So the token's going to jump in in front of, I imagine, the heel cutter. Yeah. One damage will come across, pass the turn back. This is a very, I like this play a lot from Ryan because if Luis has nothing, then this sequence gets him dead the next turn. Yep. 
and if Luis does have some sort of haste threat, then he's got some blockers back on defense, and Luis can only push so hard because Ryan can chump block and kill on the crackback. Just a, a very solid attack there. Frontier Bifwack. He's going to go dashing again. Heel cutter really showing. Uh, it's been good this game. How powerful it can be. Yep, and here, so this is just lethal right here. Yep. Yeah, and that is going to do it. Ryan Gertinski is going to win game number one here against Luis Castellanos. Mono Red Aggro up a game here over Teamer Aggro. And Teamer had a great start that game. Yeah, great start, but heel cutter did a ton of work, and Luis's mana base also did a ton of work. Luis died with a Storm Breath Dragon in his hand. He couldn't cast. And part of the problem you saw in that game is Luis is making a heavy investment into some pretty fragile creatures. Mm -hmm. So when you're taking that much damage and spending that much mana, and the plays you're getting to are still being picked apart by Wild Slash and particularly Searing Blood, uh, your matchup against Mono Red, at least game one, is not going to be great. Sideboard time. We'll start with Teamer Aggro and Luis Castanio's list. One copy of Feed the Clan, two Disample Stroke, three Bat to Nature, three Anger of the God, three Wild Slash, a Briber's Purse, two Force Away. Really good sideboard here with Wild Slash and Anger of the Gods being powerful and Feed the Clan. If it's, if it's here for any matchup, it's this one. So I think you have seven really good cards to look at. Other side of things, we've got three Peak Eruptions, three Arc Lightnings, two Harness by Force, three Eidolon and the Great Rebel, three Collateral Damage, and one Perforos got out of the Forge. So Arc Lightning might be the Achilles heel for this Teamer aggro deck. We saw what Osip Lovic was able to do last round to Luis, and there's just a lot of one and two toughness creatures floating around. So Arc Lightning, the worst case scenario, it's a three mana spell that kills something that costs three or four mana, and it's often going to do a lot more work than that. Goblin Rabble Master also in Luis's list. I also think that Harness by Force is a reasonable card to bring in against a deck that's piking cards like Savage Knuckle Blade and Storm Breath Dragon. Mono Red. Mono Making Red. Making a run for things here. Pretty straightforward list, as most yep. of them are. I, I like the burn package here for Stokes, for Slashes, for Lightning Strike, for Searing Blood. As you've said many times, if Mono Red's good, that means that Searing Blood is good. It's the best card available to Mono Red and Sanders, the most powerful one. So if you're uh, playing against opponents who are reliably presenting targets, if it's the type of card you can play four copies of in your main deck, I think Mono Red's a fine choice. When you have to cut Searing, Blaze or Searing Blood excuse me, and pl or play it in the sideboard, Mono Red's probably not that good because it probably is indicative of too many creatureless decks or huge creature decks floating around, and you just don't have enough raw power to compete. Searing Blood's especially good here because Luis has a lot of three and four mana, two toughness creatures, and he's taking a lot of damage to cast those creatures as well. And that means the Searing Blood's good, Wild Slash is good too. Yeah, both of those cards are great in this matchup. That means Lightning Strike's good as well. So all the burn spells here in Grzynski's deck are very, very good in this particular matchup. So. You know, I think this one's going to be close, but I actually think things favor Mono Red here a little bit, more than I thought they would. I think so, too, and it's just, it's basically just the lands. Yeah. The lands and then the efficiency of the burn spells. Of course, Mono Red with the creatures here, 19 for Krasinski. Again, four Swift Spears, four Foundry Denizen, four copies of Fire Drift Crusader, two Heal Cutters, as we saw in that game. They were very impressive. Two Rabble Masters, three Mardu Scouts. How do you feel about the two Rabble Masters in this deck? I'm not a huge fan of Rabble Master and Mono Red right now just because of the plethora of Wild Slashes and so forth floating around. I like Hoarding Outburst a lot because it's insurance against uh, one for one spot removal picking you apart. Powerful in a variety of matchups. I think two Rabble Masters is fine. I think people default to four copies way too often, and that I don't like. But uh, I am down with a couple copies, I suppose. I know you like Cordling Outburst. There are four of those here. Yeah, that, that card's really important. The synergy with Founder Shooter Denizen is great, and it's just a way for you to beat the one-for-one -one removal decks. For those of you guys who are just joining us, we, of course, appreciate having you. Cedric Pills, Patrick Sullivan, and Nick Miller in the sideboard, along with the rest of the SEG Live crew. Round number 15 here of Grand Prix Miami. Andrew Boswell, Chad Castell, they were at table one, they drew. Osa Lebedovich, Ralph Patesh, they were at table two, they drew. Looks like we have Bradley Carpenter, Florida local, against Zan Saeed, playing for top eight this round. Brad Nelson conceded to his brother, Corey Baumeister, in what is probably the story of the tournament That's so far. That's just great, especially with Brad. You know, Brad was so excited to have his brother playing down here. It's all he could talk to me about the, the day before the tournament. Uh, watching his brother play in grinders and really rooting him on and, yep. and to be able to scoop him into the top eight. And you can't draw it up much better than that. Evan Loveless, Brian Lee, they're playing for top eight right now. And then our match right in front of us, Ryan Krasinski and Luis Castellanos. One of these players will be playing in elimination rounds as well. Been a heck of a tournament so far. A lot on the line here for Luis here, 12-1. and one, Lost a tough one to Osip. 
really tight game one, and then Arc Lightning just blew him out of the water game two. And the X1 into double loss is a really painful way for the tournament to end. Brad Nelson on Twitter, quote, you'll never see this again. I conceded round 15, blood's thicker than water. Good luck to little bro in the top eight. We've had some great stories in the Grand Prix we've covered. Melissa DeTore and, and Frank Lepore when we were in, um, we were in Orlando, mm -hmm. them both top eighting together, Melissa losing the finals of that tournament. Brian Brondo when we were in New Jersey playing the finals against Tom Ross. Another nice one. Yeah, another really, really good story there. Tom Ross, of course, winning one of, if not the best games I've ever seen with regular damage and infect in the quarterfinals of that. And now Brad Nelson conceding to his brother in the last round of the Swiss to put in the top eight. Standard's best player says, I don't need another top eight. You can have this one. And we can both play in the Pro Tour together. And now we're going to find out if it's going to be mono red aggro or team red aggro in the top eight. Krasinski up a game as Castellanos will start hitting things off here with a Temple of Epiphany. And Luis Postbor can posture himself much more as a control deck. Game one, his deck only really allows him to attack. There's not a ton of interaction. And Mono Red's better in that role. But Postbor with Wild Slashes, with Anger of the Gods, with his ability to cut some of his small and efficient creatures, uh, I think he can posture himself much better for the matchup. Farm Tree Denizen here for Gazinski. Looking to make that little goblin pretty tough. He's going to play some creatures pre combat, of course. One is a Farm Tree Denizen. Two may be a Fire Drinker State. It'll actually be a Monastery of Swiss Spirit. So this could be a pretty good turn. Here are the attackers. But I think I, I think I eye an anger of the gods. Yeah, the question is is there an untapped land number three? If he does not have land number three on time right now, you may see Luis use a Wild Slash here as a bit of a hedge. If he has land number three, I imagine he just takes the hit and wipes the board and so forth. Well, if he's using Wild Slash right now, that means he doesn't have land. I, I suspect that's the case. Yep. So one point of damage will come across. But Cassiano's hand is actually pretty good. He's got a Crater's Claws here as well. The draw was a Goblin Rabble Master. And actually, he did have land number three, so I'm a little surprised by Interesting. that. Interesting. Sacrifice of Wooded Foothills. I mean, three damage is a lot, but I feel like your Wild Slash can do better down the line, and it's not like Luis has a very painful mana base right now. That's more of a concern in spots where maybe you're on Shivan Reefs and you have a Mayakos, but with a Bivouac and a, a Temple, it feels like uh, the Wild Slash could be held and he could have just taken the three points of damage. It's also important, I think, for Wild Slash to be able to interact with dash creatures. That's another very good, very good point. Here's Knuckle Blade. Now, I can certainly see what he's trying to set up right now. You know, now it's like, okay, now you have to commit more. Right. To get through the knuckle blade, I anger of the gods, my knuckle blade lives, that's the blowout. Well, maybe that maybe that happens, maybe that doesn't, because a stoke the flames the knuckle blade kind of messes things up. Well, there's two problems with that line of play besides besides stoke the flames, which is probably gonna get your knuckle blade regardless. One is if Ryan has something like Wild Slash or Searing Blood, he can take the knuckle blade on the way out. The other problem is if he has something like a uh, the goblin in question, the heel cutter. The, the heel cutter. He goes, heel cutter, attack you. Now you untap in what, anger? It's a, it gets a little weird. Well, here are some attacks. He saw Fire Drinker Seder pre-combat. And this is indicative of some sort of shock effect, Wild Slash, or Searing Blood. And now Luis is in this weird jam again where he kind of doesn't want to block because he's setting up an anger. Mm -hmm. But if he's setting up an anger, then whatever r trick Ryan has will allow him to cut, kill the knuckle blade after the fact. Yep. And then we're at parity with Ryan getting to go first on this turn. What if Foothills is the draw? Uh, Here is Anger of the Gods. Now, Anger of the Gods is certainly going to be good here. Mm -hmm. It'll clear things away. Fire Drinker Seder will take three, which means Rosinski will take three. 
and this is a small thing, but I think Luis probably should have attacked with the with the knuckle blade as the first order of business because he's definitely going to attack. If he attacks as the first order, Ryan's not going to block, and now he might be down four points of damage as this wild slash will now kill the knuckle blade. As we saw in the last game, every point of damage matters. Yeah, it's a damage racing matchup, and you talked about how Grzynski gets to do things first. Well, this is about as good as it's going to get. Now we can we can point back to the wild slash from several turns ago that got burned. Luis with Wood of Foothills at the ready, and now Rabble Master is going to get to at least make one token. Mm -hmm. I think Grzynski has another copy of Goblin Rabble Master in his hand. So Castellanos has been pretty inefficient this game in a deck and a matchup where he can't afford to be inefficient. This will be a Frostwalker. Now here's Crater's Claws. So there goes the Rabble Master. Uh, that's the, I mean, thankfully that play worked. That's yeah. another spot where if, if Ryan has a Wild Slash or some such, and he loses access to the Ferocious Trigger, it's big, big trouble. There is another copy of Goblin Rabble Master. Krasinski plays two, he's drawn them both. Crosswalker, any interest in blocking? Probably not. Two damage is going to come across. And now we're back in that damage racing situation that we saw in game number one. What if Foothill's going to get sacrificed here by Castellanos? He's going to go down to 11. Let's see what Lanny wants to search for. He'll go with a forest. Uh, certainly not out of this game. There's a lot of game left to be played. No, one big draw, and he's, he's totally fine. Yeah. It's just, uh, I feel like this game is right now a little bit closer than maybe it needed to be. There's Rabble Master here for Castellanos. If you're Luis, you can't really be comfortable with the way that this board gets built up. As now things like Searing Blood and Arc Lightning are... Those are real concerns. Those are knockout punches in this spot. Mardu Scout, Fire Drinker Seder. Those are the cards in hand. Mardu Scout's not bad either. If you attack with everything, you probably get a you probably get the board cleaned up here. I think it's possible he can work under the assumption that, you know. If he just attacks with everything right now and doesn't dash, you still might be able to get a double block. I guess the Rabble Master could just go in front of a token. So maybe the Mardu Scout just needs to be the first order of business here. Dash that and try to clean up the board a little bit. You're left with your tokens plus your Fire Drinker Seder. And if Luis is on one for one removal or some uh, low toughness creatures, you can still win the game from here. Mardu Scout. Rabble Master token. Red Zone. The easy block, of course, is just Rabble Master in front of a Goblin token. So that one's going to take place, and a Frostwalker will trade with the Mardu Scout, so two damage will come across. But Krasinski feels like he's almost just kind of bleeding him out. Yep. Now there's Fire Drink Crusader, pass the turn back. I think Ryan's taking the perspective of my Rabble Master is better than yours because I'm ahead right now, mm -hmm. and because I have Shocks and Searing Bloods in my deck. So I kind of want yours to hang around anyway. Well, there's Wild Slash. And now things are changing a little bit. It's a lot of pressure. Yes, it is. Two goblins are going to come in. There's the attack. Rabble Master will trigger, so now it's a four-power creature. And now you might actually have to consider putting Fire Drinker Satan in front of a Rabble Master. Uh, well, I, I still think you're kind of out-resourced at that point. I think that I would take the hit here, even though Ryan's definitely behind on the board, because Ryan has some huge draws if he takes the lumps here. If he finds a copy of... Wild Slash, Searing Blood, Stoke the Flames, Arc Lightning that races back in his favor. If he blocks here, even if he draws one of those cards, he's still not clearly ahead. And you don't say any damage this turn because the Fire Drinker Seder triggers. Mm -hmm. Let's see who the draw is. Founder Sheet Tennyson. Definitely had some huge draws available. That wasn't one of them, but I understand the point you're making. Right. I understand that it's risky, but I think that 
Ryan's falling behind here. You're playing against a deck with a lot more power in it than, than yours. And I like rolling the dice there on one big top deck being good enough to get the job done. Well, that's another Rebel Master now. Two more goblins. And now the Rebel Master has to attack as well. So it looks like these two goblins are going to jump in front of the Goblin Rebel Master pretty quickly. You can't afford to take that amount of damage. That would be six. So there's a double block. It looks like four damage is going to come across. And at this point, it's basically hopeless. Ryan yep. doesn't have anything to, to answer. Two Rabble Masters in one draw step, and he has to answer both. And so there's a double block that'll take place. And now, and now it takes a card like Arc Lightning to get back into this. Yep. Wild Slash isn't bad. It stops the bleeding. It maybe turns on Horling Outburst as a draw next turn. Sure. There is Wild Slash. I'll take care of Rebel Master. I think you have to leave Final Detention back just to block. I, I, I actually disagree. You want to attack there? Yeah, because if you're playing like your big draw is Hordling Outburst, then you don't want to block because that's so much damage. Sure, sure. And if your other draw step is Arc Lightning, it's arguable whether or not you would want to attack. It's at least close. Well, I don't like no attacking, no blocking. You have to do something with it. Mountain the draw step. So I think that plays a little inconsistent. Right. Because yeah. if, if, I under, if, either you're attacking and trying to get into a weird damage race where you peel perfectly along the way, mm -hmm. or you're trying to block, trade, peel Hordling Outburst, trade Goblins, and then maybe outdraw your opponent that Exactly. Point. you got to do one or the other. Yeah. So there you go. But as it stands, on to a third game. Mono Red Aggro, Team Red Aggro, all tied up right now. So again, one of these players will be playing Elimination Rounds later this evening. We got one game to figure out who. We'll be joining Chad Castell, Andrew Boswell, Osolo Davich, and Ralph Patesh later this evening. I think that a, uh, a line of play that I see pretty consistently from mono red players that I disagree with is acting like their deck can win the game straight up at a certain point when they start falling behind. I really like taking the philosophy in certain spots of I'm falling behind here, my opponent still got cards in hand, the top of their deck is better than mine too. I'm going to play this game like I have one or two draw steps to find the perfect card and take some risks to maximize my chances of winning if I do find that card. Well, playing around is difficult. And I think in that spot, Ryan sort of tried to approach the game like, yeah, we're, we're both drawing spells and we're both, our resources are colliding and, you know, we're both, uh, it's not clear who's really winning the game at this point where from where I'm sitting, it looked like Luis was pulling away there and Ryan needed to act like the top of his deck was perfect, either Searing Blood or Horling Outburst. Well, things are going to get better for Red moving forward. New, some new cards, obviously, from Dragon's Dark here. The Zergo Bell Striker is really the big one. Well, there's one two, man, two, two. I mean, there's two big ones. This card's great. Don't yeah, get me wrong. This card's fantastic. I, it seems like you like the Lightning Berserker more. Well, I, I don't know which one I like more because they're better in different sorts of matchups. This card's just on the play. You know, Rakdos Cackler was a huge part of what my, made Mono, Mono Red viable in the previous standard format. Uh, this card is pretty close in power level. Uh, you know, the differences are pretty subtle. Legendary is a bit of a drawback. Dash is a bit of a power. Uh, both have some camp block clauses that matter in weird spots, more, one more than the other. But uh, certainly in the band of power of Ratos Cackler, which was a card that was a stock full of in every single aggressive le red list for the time it was legal standard to the time it rotated out. And of course, Lightning Berserker is the other one. And this one, as you mentioned, maybe, maybe for bigger red decks or just the red decks are looking to play a little bit of a longer game. Well, one of the big cards for Mono Red right now uh, the decks that are willing to go a little bit higher up the curve is Outpost Siege. And when you start playing with cards like Outpost Siege, you, you run into problems where you get these opening hands, you're playing 22, 23 lands, you get these opening hands of, you know, four lands, a Boundary Tree Denizen, a Wild Slash, and it's just hard to beat anyone with those kind of hands. So the types of cards that you can play that are good on turn one and also good on turn five make building those kind of decks viable. And, and cards like this are a big part of it. It's a great mana seek. You can rationalize playing more lands with it. And all these good dash creatures do a lot to cushion yourself against cards like Anger of the Gods and Drown in Sorrow, not to mention the five mana sweepers like En Hostilities and Crux of Fate that cause mono red aggro and, and similar aggressive decks all sorts of fits. Any excitement about Dragon Fodder being reprinted? That's to make uh, two one ones? Yeah, for... to make two oh. one one goblins. Yeah, I'm in. I'm in. Good with old Foundish Deep. Pretty good with uh, Rabble Master. And on the return because of Exploit, I would imagine. Oh, some probably. Synergy, some yeah, synergies definitely there. some synergies. You've seen what Horling Outburst can do. Here's Swiss Beer. I'll start things off here for Krasinski. 
So Castellanos already down to 19. Frontier Bivouac is how he'll begin things. See what Ryan can put together for the second turn of the game. There's a mountain very quickly. Does have a Rebel Master in hand. Also has a copy of Eidolon of the Great Revel. Eidolon's pretty juicy on the play. I don't know if he was going to bring it in or not, but it's going to be good here. There's an attack from one. There's Eidolon past that turn back. If this card's not good for two points, Luis is dead in some other way. That's true. <laughs> There's a Temple of Epiphany. Just been told right now that Brian Lee has won his match against Evan Loveless. Brian Lee was playing mono red, so we might have two of those in the top eight this evening. We know we have at least one as there's an Elvish Mystic. Don't forget that Eidolon trigger, Mr. Grudzinski. That's a really painful trigger for me to watch people miss because two is just so much. <laughs> it's so much. It's twice as much as one, which is already a lot. <laughs> An expert. Expert. At I've got commentary for days. Well, he did get this one. So at this stage, if I'm Ryan, I'm just not playing around Anger of the Gods this turn. I don't think your no. opponent plays an Elvish Mystic here. I love playing Rebel Master. I'm not playing around anything. Yep, just, Come and get just, it. Just beat him up. Yep. And even if he has Anger next turn, he's down his Elvish Mystic and it's two more points of damage. Not even yep. the end of the world. I, just, I play one way. Just get in there. Show him who you are. If you have Anger of the Gods, like you said, you take two anyway. Right. It's basically free. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's his entire turn. He takes two. And he loses his Elvish Mystic. And he probably needs it to win the game, given the board. Now, I think that I would have played Hordling Outburst that turn instead of the Rabble Master. Because okay. it's a Swift Spear trigger, while well, you still have it. And if you get hit with Anger, I would probably rather have Rabble Master left over to follow up the next turn than Hordling Outburst. Yeah, the big question is, what's the better follow-up spell? Cassianos is under the gun now. Now, the flip side of that is the last card in Ryan's hand is Stoke. So there's an argument for, say, I'm going to leave the holding outburst back because I can outburst and stoke in the same turn. So that's a sure. little bit more efficient in that direction. There's Knuckle Blade. You might see him do that this turn. Yep, there's your trigger. Eidolon doing work. Ah, uh, yes it is. And there's a Crater's Claws to take your Rabble Master. So that's important. And you have to take two more from that too. Eidolon Oof. is, that's six? Uh, I count six. That's six from Eidolon? And it attacked. Eight. <laughs> <laughs> and it got to attack. Yeah. It might get to attack again. If two is a lot, then eight's an unfathomable sum of damage. Foundry Dennis in the draw. We've been saying for weeks that there's got to be a good red deck out I, there somewhere. I think he's got this. I think he's got this rolled up now. He can hold the outburst. That's a Swiss Spear trigger. He attacks with everything. Three damage comes across at minimum. Stoke finishes it off. If that's the combination of cards that Grzynski has. You know, if he sees the line of play, he's got it. And Luis tapped out. Pose is clear. Uh, I know you see it, if that's there. Here's an attack. And truthfully, he doesn't Yeah, he doesn't even need the trigger, because yeah. he can cast the Stoke of the Flames, and two damage comes across either through the Eidolon or the Swiss Pair. So he's, it doesn't have to be the outburst. Yeah, he's tapping four mana. Here's Stoke the Flames. Four plus two plus one. And that is going to do it. Ryan Grzynski is going to win this match here over Luis Castellanos. Two games to one. Mono Red Aggro will take care of Teamer Aggro, and that means we've got two Mono Red decks in the top eight. No